So just for both of your reference, this is getting live streamed. We generally don't delete videos, so be diplomatically correct. <laughs> Okay. Asking more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll begin with yes, the questions. Sorry. And I'm not. <laughs> so first of all, uh, we'll make this next 45 minutes very engaging and interesting for all of us. Ask questions. Uh, big round of applause for everybody. So, 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 sir, the first question is to you. Uh, like when you started, uh, who was your first person? Who bought the first game when you opened the game? And how did that set happen? It was. Uh, Predetermined self uh, because when I started my dealership, there was one doctor who knew me and I knew him also, and I was very well aware that he is driving a Mercedes and he is looking after a BM. And he had told me once before I started my dealership, I am waiting for BMW. At that time, I had no clue I will be the BMW dealer. And first thing I went to him, sir, I got the BMW dealership. <laughs> he got my first customer. I'm like, yes. And the day of inauguration, I gave him the delivery. Wow. So, you, that's what you meant by you know, having one to one relationship. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so, uh, so ma what is your business? How do you make money? Uh, I own by a fitness studio and now by painting, of course. I so, am doing it since last 15 years. And <coughs> I was not expecting to be very professional, but I. It happens automatically. So fitness studio has become your major business? No, not yet. Not no. actually. Now not. <laughs> okay, so the 3D mending part helps you is part of your business or it's a good thing you are doing because you are good at arts? What is your take on uh, it? It is both. Yeah. Okay. You because believe that my, my messages are always on a positive side. It's about nature, it's about heritage, and it's about road safety. So uh, I always took care that the message should be very noble. Okay. So okay. I wanted to feed two pigeons with one seed. Okay, awesome. So uh, uh, I'll continue asking that question, but if you have any question to any one of them, uh, so I have a question for. Uh, uh, speak louder so it gets yeah. relevant. And this is pretty obvious question for the scenario right now. Uh, so we have many other questions, but this is uh, what I'm thinking. What is the effect impact on business with the recent uh, decision of the luxury center? See, basically in India, uh, not only luxury. As a matter of fact buying a car because it's a visible asset you can't buy it on cash people do come to us okay, sir adjustment karoge. if i do adjustment say if you want to adjust 10 lakhs 15 lakhs in cash i i my first question to him is do you want to depreciate the value of your car on day one itself suppose if you take the delivery and you meet with an accident and the car is at a total loss, what will be your insurance value? Means because it is undervalued, you have devaluated your car by 14 lakhs, means you are at a loss. So it's second, because this car gets registered at RTO. And at RTO, you need to provide an invoice. So cash transactions are absolutely not possible in buying and this is a very wide visible asset. Second, 90% of transactions in automobile take place through banking channels. It's a bank finance. 90% customer whether he is loaded with cash or is not loaded with, here when I say cash means he's loaded with funds. They'll, he'll go with a EMI, a bank, bank finance. So there is no question of uh, but yes, because of this demonetization, there is a general perception. Everybody is busy adjusting their cash. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the reason, yes. And we also feel that there would be an impact of say 10 to 15% in sales for a short term period. Okay, fair enough. Good. So, if some, so generally at these events, we, what we do, we give these yellow smiley balls to everybody. So if you like someone, if you find someone more, you can throw these balls. Since this is a small room, we don't try to do that yet. But when, so on 27th, we have a demo day coming up at Micah. So that is one of the best program that we do. There are a lot of people will be there and very interesting stuff we do. Uh, any questions for anyone of them? Uh, yes, sir. One question. Now, you are targeting a segment which is all luxury. So what is the main thing that people who are from the luxury segment, like I am a manufacturer myself, we develop architectural products for the luxury market. So those products, what is the main thing that a customer majorly look forward to when you are marketing some product to them? 
like if BMW is a very big name for itself, but if the name does not, is, it's not there with the brand, and you're still supposed to market something which is in a luxury segment. What are the major things that customers would look forward to in that segment? Very nice question. In, as far as <coughs> automobile is concerned, um, in luxury segment, yes, number one, brand mm -hmm. perception is the most important aspect, and. And when I talk about brand, everybody has got a different view of brand. In luxury segment, currently all the three major brands which are in India, uh, Audi, Merck and BMW are considered to be luxury. Volvo is not a luxury, it, considered, it is considered to be a premium. JLR is a luxury. So all three are Germans, but then everybody has got a different perception about brand. So brand loyalty is there. So first is brand perception. Second is styling and sportiness, which when our customer comes, he knows the brand, but then after the, for him, brand is secondary, for him primary, it is the styling, the sportiness, the look is the most important. Then he'll look at the features which the car provides. And third would be the pricing. So in this segment, Yes, pricing do take part, but I would say it is 30% of the general uh, percentage wise, the weightage which a customer gives to pricing, but major would be styling, sportiness, and the features which the car or which the manufacturer provides. Uh, uh, we take one more question, and I will have one more <coughs> question. I would yes. like to ask. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it was really wonderful thought, and uh, the question is that you research very well and you find that exact angle to you know have this that uh, particular thing so if somebody is driving fast if uh, he finds a right angle and find it's very very close and he never see it before if he stop his you know car then what's the research data like did anyone find something difficult with driving having accident before so have you got similar complaints or thought the pileups yes. Okay. I would say okay. the pile up with Haan, the sudden breaking. Kafi, kafi, mm. sare logo ko photo dekhi ye lagta hai. But the thing is that, as I said, that there are some minus points of 3D artwork. As 3D artwork could be seen best through camera, not from human eyesight. So I created such an angles which gave evident 3D effects to the motorists who are target. I, I was targeting a fast lane drivers, not the slow lane. Okay, uh, this was my target, and I painted in from this angle. And I also make sure that the distance should be good enough, like uh, approximately 40 minutes, 40 feet. After 40 feet, before 40 feet, they will come to know that this is just a painting, not real blocks. So that was the safety idea we used. And uh, the tasting factor, I was not the person to find it. The Central Road Research Institute. But did they, found did they come up with certain studies or what was their yeah, yeah. observation? The Central Road Research Institute is doing this and they. They found that, that it is safe for both the drivers and pedestrians and it works at its best, especially at lean hours, in, at night especially, because people can see the artwork through from a certain distance, from safe distance. Because in, 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 during the time of the heavy traffic, I mean, no one can see the artwork because there are a lot of vehicles in front of them. So what is the current status? Is it implemented somewhere or it is still on a state testing phase? Yes, my ministry is uh, applying it and okay. also certified the same to apply to uh, it is um, and a lot of uh, other corporations are also inquiring about the same and we are going to work hard for this and I'm also trying to uh, share the entire idea entire design so that more number of artworks can be applied in a very very limited time. You should show certain, you know, this data kind of things. Yes, sir. Yes, and there is one one uh, organization uh, run by Gajendra um, Singh Ji, or the Maharaja of Jodhpur, mm -hmm. after the accident of his son for the head yeah. injury. Yes. Uh, there is one world retreat, I think. Yes, they, they do. Gajendra Singh. Gajendra Singh. Gajendra Singh. They do every two years, they do a fundraising. I think you should. Very large scale. On a very large scale yeah. in Jodhpur, yeah. and I think. Uh, because they are into that, I think you should uh, uh, promote this. Now, one question from my side. You are an artist. What, <laughs> prompted, you, <laughs> what prompted you to 
shift from a normal artist to a 3D artist? See, I am a kind of a person who always love to take risks. I always say yes to the things which, uh, if I'm not comfortable to something, I always say yes because I want to face the problem. I want to face that that fear in me, and that that's what I do, and that's the reason I'm here because I hate giving speeches and uh, answering the questions. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm improving myself, <laughs> and that's the logic I use. That I was not sure whether it would be a successful project or not, but. I should do it. I, I should uh, I check what are the We, we should take a cue from her because what she said, that is what I feel. The uh, ability to take the risk. Yeah. I think we are right. all into startups, I think for major majority of, and I think uh, what she said, okay, the risk part, and I think without the risk, there is no fun. Mm -hmm. So the ability to take the risk should, we should have inbuilt in us, and if we have a passion for that particular risk-taking ability, that passion will create more avenues for us to be more successful in our so venture. So, sir, uh, I come back to the questions. Uh, uh, which was the most risk? Skills decision that you've taken apart from taking up the degree, the <laughs> 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 So the, the most uh, riskiest decision that you've taken in your journey of this six, eight years of building a BMW dealership. Imagine the BMW dealership. Choosing the lock, certain location, whichever you feel is that you thought that, and this was very tricky. I I tell you, the riskiest decision which I had taken was to take the dealership of BMW itself. That's why I, I came <laughs> to know because uh, it is a very glamorous field. Uh, apparently, it feels it is a very glamorous business. In my second year, a lot many people came to me after that, and that was like rubbing the sword on my wounds. Uh, they said, Oh, get to serious up in business chair. I always said, I said, I said, I said, I said, Showroom chain. showroom upar na jao. It is a glamorous. Yes, uh, the main uh, earning part is the after sales, but after sales comes at the seventh year of your business. So tamari pase takat hoyi jo hiye to run a loss making business of the showroom to feed your workshop by selling this car. And I remember, but you know, I told them ke. I remember my grandfather used to tell us that if you have a thousand days to get out of the way, then do business. Karna. Means if you have the gestation period in any business, in any startup, because everybody is from startup, it is very important for us to understand the gestation, don't go for the short term gains. It is always a long term perspective and the gestation period of any business is not less than three years. So my worst decision came why I entered first of all in this glamorous uh, luxurious business but then it business was. and passion was within me and then I literally created a passion because I had always done a niche business. Before that, we we were into financial services and we were more concentrated on the Islamic uh, equity investment, which was again a very niche market. Then we also ventured into. You took IBM server, so I, at that time I was in HP, so we were yes, supposed to sell. Yes. <laughs> so, and then we, uh, we uh, uh, developed Islamic index on Bombay Stock Exchange. Then, when we went into travel agency, we went into a cruise business, which was again a niche business. So then I thought back of my mind, okay, fine, I've been doing the niche business. BMW is also a very niche market. So let us convert this into my passion. And I literally, after the second year, I created that as a passion. And I was the first dealer I remember who as a dealer principal used to sit on the floor of the showroom. You will find, you will never so ever you are find. Very beautiful showroom also. <laughs> so that, that prompted everybody. So you will never find a dealer principal. Dealer principal means the owner of the showroom in the showroom. Never. I, after me, 
I think now not many people, not many dealers have started sitting in the dealership. So make it your passion, and then if you are sitting there, the customer gets lot of confidence. If the owner himself is attending me, and that self confidence with the customer will increase your sales. Okay. Good stuff. And Samir, you mentioned that you are a very creative person, you are an artist. So how do you uh, switch between being a business person? And an artist. I always use my time in the things I, I enjoy doing. But limit that means that I spend less money. No, no, I, I believe in uh, switching over in a single day. So because I felt that uh, monotony is stopping my creativity. So I always uh, spare my time in different things. So in morning I do photography. In, in noon, uh, during noon I I go to my office and. Do Business stuff, more about money, and in the evening again about my art, about friends, and so I do various things in a single But day. Do you, do and, you, and I believe that yes. it it helps me think more and create a, a, the idea which I never. No, if I if I focus on the single thing, I I, I cannot generate. Correct. So, so do you do business planning like you know, like this is the business I will do. Or You can share See, your secrets. See, I'm a creative person. <laughs> I cannot do that. <laughs> it is about my feelings, and it is about how I feel today. And I, okay. I, it's, it, it's not much about so much of formalities compared to the other businesses. But I, I saw one of your painting, which was almost sixty-four thousand rupees. So how do you decide the pricing? <laughs> it's about the selling. People are buying, and I'm selling. So, so how do you possible. get to that with this sixty four thousand? And then, then there was another one which was forty eight thousand. Yeah. When we had the, uh, at Netrani, there was exhibition. Yeah, yeah. So how do you decide this is for sixty four and this is for forty eight? Okay. Uh, as a layman, as a painting, like both are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about the strokes I and mean, how much time and oh. energy I I use in it. So it's about that. And sir, like how how do, uh, like do you have a say in the pricing? Generally, how it works in automobiles? No, it's fixed pricing. Okay. The pricing comes from the manufacturers. We are just and generally how they decide based on the perception or the design or like is there any science behind it? When I was not a BMW dealer, so <laughs> when I was not a BMW dealer, I used always used to think, yeah, what kind of difference is Maruti Gadi man is man Maruti will look at you will even money. <laughs> But yes, uh, when I went in detail, uh, first most important is the brand value. We have to understand the value. Every brand has got its intangible asset. It has a brand value, and the things which go inside uh, is lot of detailing. Lot of detailing. If you see uh, the life cycle of any vehicle is seven years. After seven years, there is a generation change of the. Vehicle. After three and a half years, there is a facelift. So this is the general life cycle. Now, for example, the new seven series has just been launched, which is a generation change. Believe me, the next generation change will be coming after seven years. That pro not production, but the conceptualization might have been started for the next generation. So it is a long seven years process of developing. From a clay model to a concept car, then that concept car going into a commercial production, and in minute, minute detailing about the texture of the leather and texture of the. Currently, we have the entire carbon fiber cars, so that cost is involved okay. in it. Okay, awesome. Good. Uh, any more questions? Yes, sir. Uh, how's it? So, ice breaking uh, the clients and the customers is uh, usually considered to be a very difficult thing in any of the business. Where <laughs> does clients would want to make ice breaking with him? I mean, not, <laughs> not exactly. Yes, 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 yes. Fair question. Yes. Like uh, now, uh, uh, my question is, uh, how difficult is uh, it was for you for the initial phases? You know, to target and of course to convince this rich and super rich community. Of course, they have their own uh, you know time clashes. They don't give the times and uh, they don't even uh, you know. Uh, Your representatives, and as you said, that you wanted to make them come into your platform and to your betting club. Uh, how did you make that? You know, uh, perception uh, change. Not only just by building a you know a luxury uh, showroom, 
but of course a message should reach to your you know targeted person See, and similar may, question absolutely, uh, absolutely related question sir yeah uh, uh, like uh, delivering the luxury i mean it's more of an experience right and uh, delivering it at uh, in Ahmedabad, of course, is again a challenge. And as, as you said, like we developed a showroom and make customer experience. So, like BMW was not selling that much at that point in time. So, apart from that, the showroom. Like, what are the things you did, which uh, maybe forced or attracted the uh, you know customers or clients to come to BMW instead of going to Merck or you know any other? Yes. See, very important, very, very nice uh, question. Uh, here I would like to be very specific. Uh, when I, you invited me, I was just uh, observing okay, what are the things uh, which I think, uh, which I feel uh, I had not down and it is part of this, the, um, it is the answer to this question. Good and question. It, Generally the which is a very elaborate, elaborate one. <laughs> I will tell you, I will tell you, this is the this is the difference. This is the difference between uh, I would say a good dealer and a bad dealer, or a good uh, business entrepreneur and a weak business entrepreneur. Uh, this is a generally what where we lack actually in India. Uh, one most simple thing I'll tell you, generally, which the foreigners or the I would say the whites. Uh, ex uh, implemented in their uh, daily business. Generally, there is written in every shop, and why the West is thriving so much on the business? The exchange policy. And we Indians, they are staying in abroad, are exploiting that thing, they wear for 15 days, wrap it and then, and without, without any 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 Peshani pe karchali ke bagar they will without asking you anything they accept it. This is the most how you treat your customer. Second, I was telling one of my employee who was leaving me and he was starting his own business. I told him ke, remember two things in your business. One I said ke lo mal pacho ne, you right. And then see the your uh, response. And second, generally, what our perception is, ke, for example, if you have a shop, you can't get 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 a shop, you can deficiency in your product explain him okay, what might be the short for shortcoming what are the advantages which you are giving so these are the basic i say ethics in a business if your ethics are transparent and clear customer will not himself but by word of mouth he will become your brand ambassador and invite other office friends to your place. In this Vechelo Mal Pacha, I give you my example. In the history of